Hello, everybody. I am so excited to introduce to you this new series that PsychUp has been working on for quite some time. It's called Ask the Expert, and we are doing it in partnership with Columbia University Department of Psychiatry. The whole premise of this series is to give you access to the smartest, brightest people in the psychiatry psychology space. And what I mean by that is researchers and professors, they are just a wealth of information, but sometimes it just takes a long time for that information to hit the street. So we hope to close the bridge around that and give you access to these incredible researchers, these brilliant minds who are experts in these different areas. And we're gonna ask them everyday questions to help give us answers to help us navigate through life with these challenging times and around these challenging topics. So to start with, to kick off our series, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman, who is the chairman of Columbia University Department of Psychiatry. Dr. Lieberman is absolutely brilliant, which you're going to see here when we start talking to him. But what he's going to do is talk to you about Columbia, tell you a little bit about who they are, what, what type of work that they do, and really introduce this series. I am so excited. We have recorded a few of them already, and I have learned so much. Sometimes I think you're going to see, I didn't even want it to end because I found these people so fascinating. So without any further ado, please meet Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman. Dr. Lieberman, thank you so much for joining us today. This is really a treat to be able to have this conversation with you and for you to be able to share the great work that Columbia Department of Psychiatry is involved in. Can you just give us a, a high level overview of who you are, your mission and what you do? Well, thank you, Marjorie. It's nice to talk with you today. And um, I'm really just so excited about the uh, collaboration that uh, Columbia Psychiatry is doing with uh, Psych Hub. Um, it's badly needed and long overdue and hopefully we can uh, change the world for the better. Um, so uh, I'm a psychiatrist, um, but when I was in medical school and in residency afterwards, psychiatry was in a bad way. Um, it didn't have scientific uh, credibility and uh, it wasn't really acquitting itself well in terms of um, reducing the burden of illness on people with mental illness in the United States. And uh, there was a lot of criticism about the fact that it really wasn't a legitimate scientific discipline of medicine. But all that changed, and it changed very quickly. And it took psychiatry from a medical discipline that was kind of the runt of the litter and a late bloomer, and it put it on a comparable scientific and clinical footing with the other medical specialties to be able to pursue research that would elucidate the mechanisms of the brain and how they could go awry and lead to mental illness, and then what treatments might be able to uh, rescue or reverse that. The problem that's occurred is that in the little more than half century in which this complete redirection and reckoning has occurred, that public opinion and public awareness and public access to mental health care hasn't changed. And so, if you ask the average person, oh, if you have chest pain, what do you think that means and what should you do? They'll say, well, I, maybe I have a heart attack. I should see a, my doctor, a cardiologist. Or if somebody uh, finds a lump, uh, they think maybe I have cancer. Or if somebody has uh, um, a pain, they'll see an orthopedist. Or um, if you talk to people about how are you feeling or why are you behaving this way or what's wrong, and uh, you then try and sort of ask them, what do they think is wrong? What should they do about it? You'll get all kinds of things. So I, I, I'm just going through a phase. Uh, I've had a, an awakening for a new uh, orientation and religion in life. I need to see my clergyman. It's all over the place. And there's no clear way for people to get uh, impeccably credible information and know that it's the truth of the matter. So after a long period in which psychiatry was really trying to find its way in the, out of the scientific wilderness, it's now a very, very dynamic and uh, uh, important subspecialty of medicine to address a, uh, the population's need in mental illnesses. And um, the problem is, is that because of a lot of issues, uh, 
that the public doesn't get access to good care and isn't even aware of what they might benefit from. So I think you know the fact that we're talking today is an effort by Columbia Psychiatry, which has been a historically a really leading uh, department in the country in generating knowledge and establishing the standards of care um, to be able to you know get outside of the ivory tower and uh, communicate information directly to the public, uh, and I think that's that's critical and. Even if it wasn't essential before, it's even more so now because of the COVID pandemic, because uh, after the virus is wrestled to the ground with the vaccines and treatments, there is going to be a long aftermath of neuropsychiatric uh, consequences that are going to occur. Wow, thank you for all of that. A lot of this is also near and dear to my heart. My father was a psychiatrist. Can you talk a little bit about why now? Why is it like, where are we at now with, uh, with research and mental health and psychiatry compared to other times in the past? And why is it more important now than ever? Um, Susan San Sontag said in her book on metaphor that illnesses, that until, until um, science elucidates knowledge, uh, culture defines illness. And um, psychiatry is still defined by culture and not by science and it, there's no need for it to be. And uh, the reason why we're doing that, we're talking today, and why we're doing this Ask the Experts with uh, Psych Hub is because um, the, uh, the public needs to know that uh, there's a game-changing process that has come about and is continuing to occur that can make all the difference in the world to them and their loved ones. Uh, if they uh, need it, care and if they seek and get the right care. The problem is, is they're not. Um, you will see in the media more than any laudatory articles or commentaries about the advances in psychiatry and mental health care um, or the, um, uh, the stories of how it's helped people in, in any way. Um, you'll see more than those, you'll see exposés and critical stories like too many antidepressants prescribed, uh, too many anxi anxiety medications prescribed, too many psychostimulants prescribed. And while there may be uh, injudicious use of some medications by some uh, clinicians, um, the absolute reality is, is that more people who do need these medicines and would benefit from them don't get access and get treated with them, then people who don't need them are treated unnecessarily. And that has to be rectified. It's like if you had, let's say we had polio vaccine, but we didn't use it. Or let's say uh, you had a lump in your breast and you wanted to seek uh, treatment and uh, you went to the hospital and they said you need a lumpectomy or a, um, and, and then followed by radiation chemotherapy, but we can only do the lumpectomy. or um, we don't have uh, we don't have people who know how to perform these uh, uh, adjunctive treatments in addition to that. Um, the problem is that people don't know what they need, they know where to find it, and the infrastructure and workforce isn't uh, sufficiently deployed across the country to to do it in a way that uh, occurs for virtually every other medical specialty. So it's not just a situation which is an um, an unmet clinical need or a healthcare disparity, it's really a social justice issue because you have a large segment of the population that suffers from illnesses for which there are treatments that they're not getting. Yeah, it's really it's really something to think about it the way that you just proposed it. It's it's a shame to everybody because everybody everybody suffers. Do you feel as you're getting out there and you've built and, and overseen this program, have you been surprised at some of these researchers that are on your team and some of these professors and getting to know them and and like learning about how much your organization is has learned? I, I, I'm not surprised. I, I'm reveling in it, and it's been exciting as hell. And uh, the only thing that uh, is, I think, frustrating is, one, uh, we could do more with more resources, or two, we're hiding our light under a bushel. Um, and that's where you come in, uh, because you know the world just doesn't know what it doesn't know, and uh, we're not selling anything. I mean, we have more patients we can take care of. So we're, you know, we're not 
trying to drum up, they're not trying to pathologize normalcy and drum up business for psychiatry. So uh, the, the, the thing is, is that um, there's just this fragmentary knowledge. And it's not just the public. I've, you know, uh, I have testified a lot in Congress. I've dealt with uh, the administration and different agencies in various ways, particularly when I was APA president. And you wouldn't believe the notions that people have. And, and even within the medical profession, you know, I you know, continuously will uh, sort of endure the slights or the kind of offhand comments, uh, you know, sort of ridiculing uh, uh, psychiatry, you know, in, until the, you know, the prominent individual, you know, in these staff meetings who's making those comments has a problem with her family in which they call me. Exactly. So um, at any event, uh, I think that um, the future is really bright. So th the good thing is, is that uh, we're on the right track, uh, and the best is yet to come. Uh, the question is when. And I know we'll reach a tipping point, but I can't tell you when or how that will occur. Well, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing all of your professors with us, and we've had an opportunity to meet with and interview several of them, everything from how food affects your mood to understanding addiction to understanding um, issues that subspecial populations have, such as LGBTQ, understanding how change can happen. I mean, you've got this plethora of experts. And so it's been a lot of fun for me hosting it, asking them questions and learning from them. And they're everyday people. What's, what's so cool about it is they're so smart, but yet they're so humbled and they love what they've learned and they love their practice and you can tell there's a genuine passion for their field. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I get to brag and, and often uh, times and, and one of my um, sort of most favorite bra bragging points is that we're, we're the only psychiatry department in the world that has two Nobel Prize winners among our faculty. That says a lot. That's a very, that's a very welcome brag. So that just goes to show, again, our listeners, what an incredible organization that you have. And uh, we're excited to share all of those smart people with the world and let them all learn alongside us. So thanks again. Thank you, Marjorie. As always, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you enjoyed the show, drop us a review. If you haven't already, subscribe to our podcast for the latest episodes. For the latest insights, check us out at psychhub.com.